Well, I've been out in the shop this week making a run of parts, and I'm trying out this new Cinemaric style screen set that I developed uh, for a gentleman who has a brother, TC201, uh, Mateus. Uh, he's from Mattel Engineering over in Sweden. I really like the color. At first, I didn't know how I was going to like it. But after using it for a while, it really highlights all of the numbers. The DROs are very clear because of the background being uh, this aqua color. All the buttons are very easy to use. Of course, they're all push button. And if you have a touch screen, it makes, uh, it, makes it really nice that everything's big. Now, I've only included things on the screen that I use regularly however I did still leave the default mock screen and as you can see it's really busy there's just way too much info uh, you've got these speed dials here these sliders well you don't really need those if you've got the up and down arrows um, it's just kind of really redundant you've got your rapid DROs uh, a lot of this stuff, the scaling, the radius correct, this is not stuff that we use every day, or at least I don't think most people do. So it was good to get rid of all of this and try to make the G-code window and the toolpath window uh, a little bit bigger. Also, with the new screen, we've added the machine coordinate DROs, which are really nice. And I've added a lot of other little features here. We have this little hand wheel button. When you press it, it pops up the jog box. Uh, so if you're familiar with this and you use this frequently, uh, that's real handy. Of course, we've got our reset, cycle start, stop, feed hold, uh, M1 stop. Uh, this is uh, no rapids, so if you are... If you want to bypass your rapids here, you can click on this button and it will go to the default whatever you have setting right here for your rapid speed. So if I set this for 20, then when it overrides and it calls for a rapid in the G code, it will only go at uh, 20 inches per minute in my case. Of course, if you turn it off here, then it turns it off here. Uh, your soft limits, your no soft limits, or on and off, and jog. If you want to disable jog for whatever reason, uh, you have no jog. Uh, your spindle on and off, it, of course it turns green, and then your flood coolant, uh, it'll turn blue. And a nice little feature is, let me turn this on, I've added this little, looks like it's spraying graphic here for your flood. Of course, this could be used for mist, depending on how you set it up. Uh, we've got our tool information here, our elapsed time, uh, whatever work coordinates we are currently working in. This is something that wasn't on the standard mock screen. I think it's very important to have that, uh, especially if you're running in different work coordinates, G55, G56, that sort of thing. Uh, we have a tool symbol here and when you call for a tool change this will blink yellow of course we have our feed rate and again we can override this with our up and down carries uh, buttons here and our uh, in the input speed and our RPM that we're currently running again buttons to override that we have our nice big tool path window and a nice big g-code window this is really nice when the g-code's running because it always keeps the g-code in the center here but you can kind of gives you a little bit easier visual of what's coming up at least in my opinion of course you have your standard buttons to edit your g-code and a really nice feature on this screen that I really like is you have your MDI which you don't have on the regular mock screen so you always have to leave this screen in order to uh, do some uh, make some moves with the, uh, the media line so it's nice to have that on this screen so I tried to put 
everything I possibly could onto this screen and actually only the useful stuff that I use quite frequently is here so I never have to leave this screen uh, while running code. So let's take a look at it running some G-code. So here we go. Uh, we'll hit cycle start. You should see this tool change tool here blink. Alright, you can see that we have our blinking tool here to indicate that we're changing the tool. We insert the new tool here. Let's run some G code. Click OK. A drilling operation, drilling about 10 holes. See our flood coolant's on, our spindle turned green. a boring operation with a quarter inch end mill, but we're making a 9 30 seconds hole here. You can see our tools flashing yellow here for a tool change. It's nice to have a touch screen. We can see that the M6 Macro is running again. We're waiting for a tool change here. Alright, we're going to do some engraving. I've got just a uh, TTS engraver here. I love this thing. And the spindle doesn't come on for this particular operation. We don't need it. You can also use the mouse here. So our symbol will go off once the macro stops running and exits out. There we go, and now we're going to start doing some engraving and stuff. Uh, really clear, uh, and I really like the fact that there's only what you need on here. Uh, also have my probing routines here I've added to this tab and these I've used frequently and tested the touch off I don't touch off uh, so it's this particular macro is not well tested so use caution with that but all the other macros seem to be working just fine for um, the impact tolerant touch probe that I have Alright guys, well that wraps up this video on the Cinemeric Style Mach 3 screen set. Uh, thanks for watching the videos. How about a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And most importantly, be safe.